been adjusting for no one talking like that. I've been adjusting back to normal life. It's really easy to sit and watch other people follow their dreams and do things that you think look crazy, fun and enjoyable and I know that I still, even though I'm having the best time of my life, I still look at other people, which is ridiculous, and go, oh, but look how successful they are, or I could never do that. I'm not clever enough, wise enough, knowledgeable enough, good enough to do that. No, no, no. I have decided to call that voice in my head Flavia, Flavia, you can pee off because I am not interested anymore. And when I got to about 28, that's when I started to not listen to her as much. And you can have a set goal of what you think you want. And it, you think you're going to do this bit and that 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 to get there. But actually... It doesn't work like that. It all seems too difficult or, or too much of a challenge or it just seems like it's not going anywhere and then suddenly something will happen and you'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But it isn't, this is what I want to do. Educate yourself, go get that job. Acting isn't that. I got into acting when I, well, basically, when I was eight, I watched a film called Beaches and it had a lady called Bette Midler in it and... I was obsessed. I just remember thinking that she was so just amazing. She made me laugh, she made me cry. I couldn't like fathom what it was exactly that she did that I found so amazing, but I just, I loved watching her. And I decided from that moment that that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I want to do what she did. And I assumed that it was acting. And I started auditioning. And the first audition I ever went to it was for a corporate video. So I remember being, I still know the girl that I was in the audition with, my first ever audition. There was three of us in this audition and people are talking and I've never sat in one of those. I don't really know what they're gonna ask, what we're gonna do. And I think we must've had a few lines and then they started talking to us. And in an audition, if you don't know how it works, generally, you're in a weight room and then they call your name. Usually you go in on your own, but sometimes you go in with a couple of other people if they want to see you interact and stuff. And they'll usually be either the casting director in a chair opposite you, or you might have the casting director and the director and the producer. There was probably maybe two or three people in this audition. But I remember thinking at the time, like, I was a good actor, like there wasn't really anything to worry about. I'd just go and do my thing and then that would be it. And I would hopefully get the job. Because I'd never been up for an audition before, I didn't realise how many people went up for these things, how unlikely it was that I would get the job. And then they ask questions about what things we had done. Now Dominique starts talking about the fact that she had been in a show at the Palladium, which is this really prestigious theatre in London, the West End. And then the boy next to me had also been performed at the Palladium. And I suddenly was like, this is my first audition. I haven't done that show at the Palladium. So he comes to me and I was like, okay, so I did um, The Wizard of Oz. And I was in Bugsy Malone and also I was in Oliver Twist. And the casting director was like, great, amazing. He was like, at the Palladium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. At the Palladium. Not at the Palladium. In my school hall. At Langley Manor School. End of year show. But I wasn't going to sit there and tell him in front of these other two that had just done loads of stuff at the Palladium that... I had just done them in the school show, so he was like, great, really good, amazing. And then I got the part. Guys, this is not about lying your way to the top, but sometimes you just might have to bend the truth a little bit. And during the acting world, people do that a lot. So I bended the truth a little bit and I got the part. And that was like my first job. And I remember being like, this is amazing. This is so cool. Like, I want to be an actor. I had an audition. And I got the part. Easy. Sorted. I'm on a roll. 
I'm going to be Bette Midler and I'm going to be at the Oscars in literally five years. Easy, five years. Maybe four. Things do not work out how you think they might. And then the big one happens and it is for Harry Potter. And only now, at like 32, can I look back and go, oh my god, I was in Harry Potter! That is amazing. That is amazing. Sh guys, I don't even think I've realised until now what a big deal it was. I played Quidditch. That is insane. You know what got me, what got me the most is I went to Comic Con the other day in London and it doesn't die, like people's happiness when they get to meet Harry Potter characters or people's enthusiasm over Harry Potter, it doesn't die. From nine till six, I had like a, there was a couple of lulls but I had queues for people to come up and meet me and get my autograph and have a picture. Firstly, at 16, I did not appreciate, I didn't appreciate, I wouldn't have appreciated that. But now, I'm like, especially being part of the Dan TDM tour and seeing how his fans are with him and then realising that you have a certain effect on people because you were involved in this massive thing. It was, honestly, oh, I got to be a part of that. Seriously. I honestly don't, I can't express how amazing that feels. And I'm like, literally like me, little old me. Like, I wanna say a nobody, but that's really, that's really detrimental because nobody is a nobody, everybody is a somebody. And I just think that it's really hard to believe that when you're growing up, because actually growing up, you're just thrown hormones and awful, horrible feelings of insecurities and it's really hard to own who you are and to embrace it and to be proud of it and to trust that everything about you is what's special about you and even if you're annoying to someone you're not annoying to somebody else and that thing that makes you different or unique or weird is what's great about you and if you're not unique and weird and if you're just ordinary and average at most things which is why I always felt like I was that doesn't mean you can't do amazing things and beautifully like insane and I honestly am so grateful that I got to do that and be a part of it. After Harry Potter you think that your world is made. I was you know if I thought I was going to get to the Oscars in five years man I was I cut it down to three and in hindsight for years for about a good a good eight years, I regretted not doing Harry Potter 4. I really, really did. They replaced me with somebody who, which is hilarious, someone at Comic Con bought a picture of the other girl to, for me to sign, and I had to be like, this isn't me. I mean, to be fair, I'm mixed raced. This girl, she's black. She is so much darker skinned than me, and it's so obviously not me, but he was like, really, it's not you? No, that's not that's not me. I thought that everything was going to be amazing. I thought I was just gonna book this job and that job and you get knocked. Your ego gets knocked. I was out of work for a good couple of years. And when is it time to give up? And you would always say, never. If you love it and it is your passion, you don't stop. You don't stop even if it's not making you any money, even if you can't pay your rent, pay your rent somehow else and you just keep acting. 
And I realised in that moment that I didn't love it enough. I just didn't love acting enough. I needed to step back. I could not. I didn't enjoy it anymore. I didn't find it fun. I didn't enjoy the process, not even rehearsal periods. I would be insecure when I was on stage and doubtful when I was off stage that what was it all for? What was the meaning? Like, what was the purpose? Like, did this make anyone's life better? Because it wasn't making my life better. I got to this moment where I just had to go, I can't do it anymore. And look, if you really love acting and it is your dream and it's your passion and you love it so much, then no, you get to 60 and you keep going and 70 and 80 until you are on your deathbed and you keep on. And I honestly truly believe that if you are persistent and you really want it, you just have to be in it to win it and therefore you have to keep at it. But I didn't feel that way anymore. It's like I literally fell out of love with it. I fell out of love with everything it meant. Because I've been only focusing on acting and actually there was like other things I could have been doing that I really loved and enjoyed. And I used to watch people. Okay, secret. There is a girl that I was from my drama agency and she's mixed race like me, a teeny bit older maybe, beautiful. And she suddenly blew. She got a job and a job and a job and she moved to LA and her husband moved to LA with her. And I remember just being like, oh my god, this girl is... She is everything that I would love to be doing right now. She is just the epitome of like, ah. Oh. And one day I was following on her on Twitter and I saw a tweet about a job she booked. And no kidding, I, I, ha I had like a breakdown. I literally was like, You know, that like awful snot, streaming, tears. I actually rolled off of the sofa. My boyfriend was like, what are you, what the F are you doing? And I was distraught. I, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom why I couldn't be doing what she was doing and why not me and it wasn't that I didn't think I wasn't good enough surely I, I, I was good enough but there was this niggling I wasn't and that hurt so when I got to this stage where I would could see another mixed race girl on telly that you know I could have played and it didn't stab me in the heart I kind of realized that I had made the right decision and I still followed that particular girl on Twitter and Instagram and I've even met up with her in LA and I could be actually happy for her without this like why not me and I felt good and then I got dumped by my agent and I was just about to go to Bali and I'd just done a fitness competition for a second my ego was like <laughs> and I had to be like wait Mm -mm. You didn't want this. Have a second. You don't want to act anymore. It's fine. And a week later, I get a Facebook message from a lady called Elspeth saying she's working on a theatre show with a YouTuber. He has over 7 billion views and I think at the time 10 million subscribers and it was meant to be four dates, now there's 16. Would I like to do it? So I was like, this is amazing. I get to act for fun and get paid and still do my other job, which I love. And a year later, <laughs> to the day when we did our first show was the other day. So it's, this week is a year since we started doing the tour traveled kind of like the world and got paid to do it worked with someone amazing had the most amazing bosses pretty much got to pt the whole time got to discover what i actually really wanted to do more and more as time's gone on meet a whole bunch of beautiful human beings and fans and my point is no i may not have got to the oscars within five years no, but I did get to perform on the stage that the Oscars is held. I may have thought that I wanted to be starring in a film opposite Meryl Streep or Colin Farrell, but instead I got to perform 
in front of Colin Farrell. I may have thought that I wanted to do one film every five years. And I actually got to travel the world and live the life that I love living and work doing the stuff I actually love doing, which it isn't big films. I actually love being on stage with someone, having an interaction with an audience and getting the feedback of their energy and all of that. And yeah, I did just say that. So my point is, it may not go the way you think it's going to go. Your dreams may not end where you think they're going to end because actually this it's a continuum. It's not linear in the way in which you get there. It's not like this. The trajectory is definitely not like that. It is a lot of this. And sometimes you're here for a really long time and it doesn't make sense. But you've got to find what you love doing. And I thought it was acting. When Bette Midler was there on the screen and I was watching Beaches, I thought what I wanted to do was act. And actually, I discovered in all of this, in all of the time out and getting to coach one-on-one -on -one with people and having my Instagram and then working with kids and having, seeing Dan and his fans and seeing all of that, I realized it wasn't acting. I was actually obsessed with how she made me feel, that sh I could relate to her and empathise with her and what she was going through in that moment on the screen, I was going through like there on the sofa and just, it sounds corny, but that's what I love. I love interacting and connecting and sharing what I've learned and then learning other things of other people and like all of that energy like balled up into one, however that comes out, whether it's in a YouTube video or an Instagram post or replying to comments or writing, that's what I love. And that also comes with acting, but like quite specific, not just any old thing. Like this year, I feel like it's touched me and what say Dan has given out has touched hundreds thousands of people millions in his videos and to be a part of that for like a split second made my world and i couldn't have even guessed it or predicted that this is how life was going to be because actually it's even better i'm actually really happy doing this really happy here in my new home that I bought with my fiance. And I think trust what you wanna do, love what you wanna do, be persistent and consistent at what you wanna do. Give your soul and your heart to it, but don't give your whole life. And find other passions that you like doing around it because you never know what that might lead to. Don't say no. Feel your fears and do it anyway. Jump head first in. Don't retreat or retract and, and not do something because you think that it might be a waste of time. Go do it. Don't just dream it, do it. So, here's my little video about chasing some dreams. It was a little bit long-winded, I know, sorry. <laughs> But that is all for today and I hope that this has made you feel excited about all the things you want to do because whatever they are, whether it be a YouTuber, a doctor, a digital marketer, engineer, whatever it is you want to do, you can do it. Okay. Latest haters.